live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next here at the Bella Center in Copenhagen. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside of my co-host, Stu Miniman, analyst. We have two guests for this segment. We have Angie Cusworth, she is the COO, Hardy Fisher Services. Thank Hi. you so much for coming on, Angie. Hi. And we have David Cusworth, SVP Sales at Hardy Fisher Services. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Did and, and a husband and wife. And a husband and wife team. I, I, I believe we have done it before. I know we've had twins on the program. Right, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah. Couples who work, I like it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get into your uh, into how you make it all work. But David, I want to start with you. Describe Hardy Fisher Services for our viewers who may be unfamiliar with your company. Yeah, so we uh, own and operate a large data center based in Leeds. Uh, so it's a 400 rack capacity data center. Uh, previously built for BT, house NHS patient records in the UK. Um, and we operate that as a uh, reseller based data center. So we have very clear go to market. We have our co-location. Uh, we have uh, managed services and then obviously cloud, which is based on Nutanix. So wait, Andy, what are some of the biggest business challenges that you face uh, in, in, in your world? So I think um, it's trying to convince customers to move to the cloud. Um, obviously, you know, we've been doing cloud for some time now. Um, don't know yeah. how. <laughs> yeah. So, Dave, Dave, we were talking about that that move to cloud. Help, help put where you, you know your services built built on Nutanix yeah, fit so into customers' overall picture because you know you've SaaS, you've got public cloud. People are building private clouds off Nutanix or uh, other type of hardware. So, uh, you know, how do you play with some of those other components? And so I, think, I think a lot of the challenges that we've seen is um, people who are comfortable with Azure. So a lot of resellers that we deal with, um, Azure is a safe bet. Nutanix is still quite a new name in the marketplace. Um, there's people who don't want to move to the cloud because they don't understand it, so a lot of the time we show them the cloud platform in our data center so they can touch and feel it, they can actually see it, uh, which gives them a bit more confidence. Um, and then from our side, it's the service wrap, so it's, it's holding them the hands on the journey to the cloud, so it's giving our technical ability to say, you know, we'll do it for you, we'll hold your hands, we'll get you working. Um, at the end of the day with cloud, it's people's businesses, so if the cloud doesn't work, it affects their business, and we're trying to put our hats on as a customer. Yeah, it, it's funny, it reminds me, we used to have the joke, there is no cloud, there's just, you know, yeah. your computer somewhere else. Uh, Angie, bring us inside a little bit, your customers, it sounds like there's still a little bit of trepidation about them making changes there. Yeah, uh, I think one of the, um, the reasons that we've been so successful is that um, we follow um, IT service management very well, um, so we help our customers through the whole journey. Um, so people that are new to cloud, uh, we have excellent technical um, people that can help them, um, and we, you know, we have a fantastic data center as well, so they know that their kit's safe with us. Yeah, it, bring us inside a little bit. You t talked about how many racks there. What 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 differentiates your data center? There, there's, you know, most companies. You know, we, we we tell the average you know enterprise out there. You know, friends don't let friends build data centers. There's <laughs> other people that know what they're doing. Uh, so g give us a little bit of a virtual tour if you would. Yeah. Mind. So our data center, like I say, it was um, originally built for BT um, uh, for the NHS, and as the as they moved to cloud, the need for their data center shrunk. Um, Leeds as a city is a growing city, um, and there's not many. Data data centers in Leeds, so we took the opportunity to really relaunch the data center. We knew it was a very high spec data center, it costs a lot of money to build, um, and then it gives, it gives the customers confidence that when they're going in there, it's very secure, it's very high resilience, um, and from a cloud platform, we've gone completely Nutanix, so it is literally, you can come in, you can touch Nutanix, you can play with it, um, and it just, it's just a whole journey really that to make sure they're in a safe pair of hands. Yeah. Talk a little yeah. bit more about how Nutanix comes into play with your organization. So it's the, the, we went with Nutanix because we were looking for something to be different. So there's a lot of people who got, have got Azure AWS um, in that reseller market. So we wanted something that was um, focused on SMEs. So we've got a very, very much uh, SME focus. Um, and cost comes into it. Um, having that support, so being able to ring somebody up and not be in a big call center in, in, in Asia or in Europe, um, and somebody who can actually talk them through what the issues are, but also be very responsive 
um, and put the customer first. Yeah, it, it's interesting. When I think about kind of the traditional service provider, it's like they've built out their management stack. They build something at a scale so that you know, they can do something that their customer couldn't. Sounds like Nutanix is, is, is a different type of offering. Yeah. We've been talking about all week. Um, it's not thriving in that complexity, but you, know, you just have a simple offering. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, price and easy to manage is yeah. something that service providers need. So, um, it, 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 you know, sounds like if you'd built this 10 years ago, uh, you might have had to do something very different than, than how yeah, you do no, it today. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's given us a market that really, um, that hasn't been there in the past. It's, it's a, a market, you know, it, we can help resellers on the journey. We can give them a, a bit of a lift up. So if they're too small or they've just got going in cloud and they, they can't afford to get their own Nutanix platform, then we can get them going and then they can start going into Nutanix. Um, but it's, it's a real differentiator, because like I say, a lot of people, it's the safe bet is Azure AWS. It's, you know, it's a Microsoft name, so no one ever gets sacked for by Microsoft kind of conversation. I think one of the other compelling things is um, the cost of it as well. A lot of people think it's cheaper to go Azure or AWS. Actually, it's Nutanix is very cost effective for our customers, and that's why it appeals for you know, the kind of smaller resellers that we deal with. Yeah, um, are you starting to do any connection? I think about Azure or AWS have their direct connect. Yeah. When you have people's uh, environment, sometimes they might want to access those services. Or are you starting to look at that, that environment yeah. or some of the Nutanix yeah. uh, hybrid solutions? Yeah. So what we do at the moment is we back up mainly to Azure. So we've, we've, uh, we have a central core platform with Nutanix and then we back up as a failover to Azure. But again, customers don't like the complexity of even doing that as a backup. So it's been great coming to the event and see the Nutanix backup and the options there um, because our customers love Nutanix. Yeah. So are you interested in the mine solution that, that's yes, been rolling absolutely. out? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. That's one of the things that we're really looking forward to going back to explore yeah. and that'll be next on our roadmap. Are you starting to look out as to which solution uh, for, for, uh, with mine you're going to use or yep. are you still under discussion? We'll leave that to our uh, technical director. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I'm sure he'll point us in the right direction. One of the things we hear a lot about at this conference is, is Nutanix's culture. It's people first culture, mm. it's uh, humble, honest, hungry. How does that come into play in terms of your interactions with the company? That's, um, I think for us, that's a, a culture that we have as well in our own business. Um, and that really does shine through for every person that we've ever dealt with at Nutanix. Um, they, they're, it's always customer first. I, just there, yeah, I can't fault them, they're amazing. I think for us it doesn't feel like you're a big company because it's such a personal relationship. So it doesn't feel like you're in you're talking to a big corporate company where you you're not heard, you're not uh, you know if you're not a big customer, you, 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 the relationships we've got are with people where we can just pick up the phone. They might be in a really senior senior position and they'll help us and that's something that's really good with yeah, Nutanix. It, 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 I'm, I'm wondering if you've had any experience with Nutanix support. So we, we know yes. uptime must is, is super yeah. critical. Yeah. So what, what is your experience? Yeah, fantastic. I mean, for me, from an operational perspective, I love the self-healing that's built into the platform anyway. I love the fact that my um, technical guys don't have to be uber technical to be able to operate. That's one of the other benefits of Nutanix for us. Um, so. It, it ticks all the boxes from an operational perspective. I think from our side as well, the, the technical guys, uh, so our first and second line guys can understand Nutanix, they can get their head around it. Um, so it's very easy to train them up with Nutanix as opposed to uh, other platforms where it can take up to a year to really understand how the platform works. It is very, very simple for our support desk, which means it's less demand on the support desk on Angie then. Training in the skills gap is a hugely important issue for, uh, in, in the technology world, yeah. in the United States and also in Europe. How are you finding it? What is it like to be a leads-based company? Are you finding the, the people you need to, to, fill, to fill the roles you have open? Well, we're really lucky actually because our technical director um, is an ex-trainer. So we can do a lot of the training um, on site, um, but Nutanix um, training is something that we're definitely going to be tapping into. I've been speaking to the guys here um, and that's another useful thing for us to take back to the UK. Okay. Uh G give our audience a little bit of insight, uh, you know, what you get out of coming to the Nutanix conference. You came last year uh, to London, you came here to Copenhagen. Yeah. What were you hoping to accomplish? What what, what have the conversations been? Give, give us a little bit of a flavor. I think it's been good to um, to network with other, other new Nutanix customers to understand their journey. Um, definitely to learn about what Nutanix is doing now and in, and in the future. Um, when you're running a business, it's kind of head down sometimes around, you know, you don't get time to really sit and look at, look at what the market's doing. Um, so for us, it's just, and it's also to be part of that journey. The, you know, we, we um, went to events uh, four or five years ago when it was much smaller, much newer name, and to see what, how fast Nutanix has gone is amazing. 
really is. Absolutely. I think it's given us clarity um, on what we need to do next year. Um, like I say, you've helped us by coming here today uh, and yesterday, seeing the presentations on how we can implement that into our own business and how we can really take Nutanix forward. In terms of the future, you, you said you are gonna, you're looking into mine, you're thinking about using some of the Nutanix training capabilities. Frame, beam. <laughs> so there's a, there's yeah, a lot, lots. there's a lot there. Yeah, as I, so yeah, we've really honestly taken so much back and I can't wait now. I think for me personally, it's re-energized me. Um, I'm excited about going back and just working out where we can uh, really take, you know, take Nutanix forward. And what's next for Hardy Fisher? It's just growth. We're, we're at an early journey now, so we're at the kind of start of our journey. Uh, over the next five years, it's all about growth. Um, we, we see Leeds as, as a, bit, a city that's growing itself. Uh, we've had a lot of change in Leeds as a city. Um, it's still quite small um, as a digital city, but it's got massive focus on growing. Um, and we're a big part of that because we're, we're one of three data centers in Leeds, so it's not a heavily populated area for data centers. Um, and we're all about helping local resellers, you know, get on that ladder for Nutanix. So that would be a big driver for us, you know, help the smaller MSPs, um, you know, let them touch and feel Nutanix in our data center, um, and then hopefully give them the leg up for them to buy their own boxes and then co-locate that in the data center as well. So as, as, as devoted Nutanix customers, any advice for Deeridge Pandey? He's, got, he's, <laughs> he's under a lot of pressure. It's a competitive landscape. You, you love Nutanix. He's nailed What's it. <laughs> I think just keep doing what they're doing. Stick to um, your knitting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Think, um, don't get sold by sold to one of the bigger boys and keep the... Yeah, keep absolutely. Doing. Keep the culture. It's, um, and the, everything that you're doing technically wise, it's just unreal. I We're think the culture away. as well, that, that to, keep it, to grow as, as big as you are now and keep that culture, which has been very hard. I mean, yeah. we try to do it in our businesses. You know, we have a very uh, hard working ethic, but we want it, people to enjoy where they work. We want to have a good work-life work balance, and it's very difficult to do in a big company. Is it, do you like working with each other, your husband and wife team? Is yeah, it has its challenges. <laughs> 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 no, it has its challenges, but we've worked together for 12 years now. So, so we met at work, yeah. yeah so All right. It's very so. hard because um, I sell it and I'm just a sport it, so unless I sell it properly, I get in trouble. <laughs> right, <laughs> the dog <laughs> Have to rein him in. Exactly. Well, David and Angie, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure thank having you on the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more for Nutanix.next in Copenhagen coming up in just a little bit.